Right, I've took all the plastic off of it and the seat and the front bits have got the cables all out the way and have chopped off these two bits that go across just under here that hold the front plastic on. You don't need them. The next job now is to take off the front axle and make it five inches wider. Two and a half inches each side of box tubing the same size as what the axle's made of. I've took the split pin out and the nut off and took the front axle took the front axle off, took the, the tracking rods both off from the steering. Okay, now what what's doing is this axle I want to make it five inches wider, so you need to cut it about there, don't cut it that side, cut it this side of that, about 5 8 that looks like, and then I need to weld this bit in there, and then that will make that 5 inches wider to put some bigger wheels on it. And then obviously because I'm doing that, this needs to be 5 inches longer. Now this is just 8 mil bit of bar, I'm going to get a bit of stainless I've got 8 mil and make another one of these 5, five inches longer than that. And then this one is because it's half of it. That needs to be two and a half inches longer because you're putting two and a half inches in that side. Okay, that's what I need to do now. I've welded the front axle. I'm just waiting for the paint to dry on it because I'm giving it a couple of coats of spray paint. These back ends, they're designed to come off. You put take that pin out and it will pull off. On the other buggy I've made, I've just welded it as well because I don't want it to come off and got rid of the pin. Right, so now you don't need this bit um, on here. It's just to lift it up with. It's just like a handle. Um, that's no longer required. So I'm going to cut, take these two Allen key bolts out, take that off. Then I'm going to cut this off level with there so we can get a seat on lower. And then I'm going to cut through and take off these anti-chip wheels, okay, I'm going to cut it off there, it's okay, you can pull the pins out and pull them off, but there's no point, it's just extra weight, I'm going to pull it off, cut it off, I've cut off this bit, okay, to make it lower, this bit is just a handle anyway, on them two bolts, cut that off, that's no good, we're not using these wheels on the back to stop it tipping backwards I've cut them off from underneath that's off there and because there was a bit of movement I have decided to weld it so I've put a bit of this thin um, metal across in between there and I've got a nice weld on there I've cut the top of the pin off and I've put a weld on the pin and I've adjusted these bolts so I've got no movement whatsoever because I can't stand imperfection in a way this is how I'm making the spacers to go on the backs of the car so these kids can't roll the car this is safety it's not that much trouble and it's got to be done in a way these are two tank cutters this one's 89 mil three and a half inch this one's uh, three quarters, inch and three quarters, 44 millimetres. That's what I've used. I've cut out that, a couple of them. I've cut out four out of two mil aluminium. I've had to make the bigger, the middle slightly bigger because that's 44 mil and these shot rider shop wider axles this is just a front one as an example these are for the back of the car and you've got to slightly make the inside bigger to get it to slide slide onto there like that and then that's the put that will make the back wheel the back wheels of the car so that you can't roll it and tip it that's going to make the back of the car wheels apart that much that each side after you've cut 
after you've cut the hole out for the big wooden bit that goes in there then obviously the smaller tank cutter is cut out the middle okay that seems pretty simple then what I've got to do next now is because I'm making these ready for the back to go on the back of this little buggy what I've got to do is I need to drill these out I've done these so that I can drill the M8 holes in between there so I need to drill these so M8 bolts go through there okay that's about it really if this is slightly bigger I think they're probably 8.5 these are slightly bigger than 8 mil, so I need to find a drill that fits in there tight so I can just put it in there and just mark the centres of where the holes are going to be so that, that I don't get them out of line because that would be disaster if I do that I'll end up making some again ok I think that's enough for that I'll drill them out in a minute also I've countersunk these and put these together rather than drill them out so you're fiddling about putting them on and I've just used these small screws just to hold it on there I've done them kind of opposite like that and then I'll drill in between that and then it'll be easy to just slip them on there I've found a drill that fits in there dead tight that must be this must be an imperial imperial drill that goes in there tight and then the M8 is looser so I'm going to use that I'm going to use that to get the centre. I'm going to use that to get the centre of these holes. Just going to go in a little bit to get the middle. Okay. And then I'll drill out with them, mate. And then I won't, they won't be tight fitting in there. And I won't get them out of line. I've drilled all these out now. So the M8 bolts can go through. So that will space out the back wheels. That's got that job out of the way. This is the new axle. I've welded two and a half inches there, two and a half inches there. And also I've welded a little bit there to stop the steering going round so far so there's less chance of these little daredevils going along and whopping it straight round and trying to tip it over this is the other one just so you can see so you can see how much wider it is ok 5 inches wider on the front this is a bit of 8mm stainless rod and I've tapped the threads on it each end to replace it five inches wider to match that this is two and a half inches longer to match for the steering part but um, I've not had to remake one of these I've just had to tap one end because I've got a longer one and I've just measured it and cut it down so now I'm going to bolt them on now and then put some bigger wheels on I've put the front axle back on Greased it up, I put the split pin in, put the track rod ends on and bigger wheels. And now I'll need to work on the back end now to sort that out. I've put the spacers on the back wheels, I'll put them on except for this. This wheel hub's not the right one, it's sticking out too far. I've got to get another one from somewhere. Right, on the steering, this is looks seems to be 18mm right steel bar that fits in there perfect right so what I've done is I've cut down the handlebars I've cut them off because there was a curve there I've had to chop it off there and because the boy wants the handlebars higher then I've put a piece in there and I've welded a piece of that 18mm bar in there so that I can put these handlebars in here I've obviously got to get these straight and then drill the two holes in there to fix that up 
and then obviously get some straight edges each side of there to make sure the tracking slightly going in and not outwards. If it's if you get your tracking and you're adjusting outwards, the steering wants to go all over the place. It needs to just go in, even well, a quarter of an inch, whatever, just slightly, that's all. This is how you check your tracking to make sure it's going inwards and not outwards. At the moment, I've just clamped them straight edges on there, and this side is saying 25 and 3 sixteenths, and at the other end, we're talking just over 24, which means they need to slightly go out like that, so I need to just shorten this a fraction by adjusting it. There is one other little job that needs to do before I reassemble this, so I can go for a test run, and that is the wheel, when you turn, is so close to the corner of that, which is a bit dodgy. So what I've done on that other buggy is I've cut these down. Okay, so you put a straight edge across there and cut them off two inches. Because if you're putting a body on there, you need to go back that much and then allow three quarters of an inch because so you can glue a piece of wood on there so that you can um, fix fix your floor on that corner together. That's, that's what I need to do. Chop off two inches right down each side. I've clamped a straight edge on there so it can be cut across. Now these are Clark's one mil cutting discs. They're about one pound and eight pence roughly for 10. Uh, about 10 pounds 79 uh, for a box of 10. <coughs> I'm just going to act this off of here. It's always best to... It's always best and safer to wear goggles and a mask, but I'm not going to breathe this in, and this is what I'm doing. I'm just going to spin this off here. Like this I've cut the... All them bits of metal off now, and I've drilled some 5mm holes in the ends of each of them so that I can, when you put the body on, you, you can screw it from the floor. If I use coach bolts like I have on the other one, then obviously I'll just drill them out bigger. Right, this is a serious safety rule, the golden rule. When you're changing these, because I'm a musician... When you're changing these blades, unplug the angle grinder, okay? And then you've not got a risk of chopping your fingers because I'm just going to swap blades over. I need to swap over the blades because I need to put a flap disc on and round off the edges. Round off the edges on it. And that's a golden rule off these tools like that. Unplug the unplug it because it, it, these things will take your fingers off I had to go up the hospital once because I just touched one of these jumped on my hand and it just rips your skin off right so we just swap blades so don't want anyone to hurt themselves 